today we're going to talk about a part of home inspections that's a little different than you think. When most people think about house inspections, they think about us finding things that are broken or incorrectly done or physically in distress at the end of their life, etc. They're thinking about old roof, broken heating systems, dangerous electrical, leaky plumbing, fire hazards, etc. Yes, all those things are certainly important. But what folks don't typically consider are some of the hidden, less well-known dangers to you and your family. What are we talking about? We're talking about indoor air quality. So today we're going to dive into two specific areas that can compromise indoor air quality, things you should think about when you get a home inspection. First, let's talk about radon gas. A lot of people don't actually know what radon is. So quickly, radon gas is a naturally occurring gas that's a byproduct of decaying uranium and radium, et cetera. You don't need a science lesson. But anyway, those products decay in the soil and they result in radon gas emanating out of the ground. In America, radon gas is actually the second leading cause of lung cancer to Americans, obviously right behind smoking. The thing about radon is it's colorless, odorless, and it's not detectable without special testing. So you could live in a house with radon gas at an elevated level and not really even know. We test for radon gas using a continuous radon monitor. So that's a machine that goes in the house and it runs for minimum 48 hours. Now, because radon's drawn out of the ground, the levels fluctuate based on weather conditions, barometric pressure, et cetera. So for this reason, we do a 48-hour test. That way we can get the average radon gas level in the house. Now, even though radon gas is dangerous, it can cause lung cancer, uh, the mitigation is actually, in the grand scheme of things, fairly inexpensive. Generally speaking, at this time in Rhode Island, to get a uh, radon gas mitigation system in a house, you're probably looking at about $1,200 to $1,500 for most single-family house installs throughout the state. Radon gas levels generally have more to do with the geology under the house than the construction of the house. So for these reasons, we recommend to our customers that they test for radon gas when they're buying a house, especially if you have a finished basement or uh, a basement that could be finished in the future. Because radon comes out of the ground, those levels in the below-grade areas, your basement, tend to be higher than those on the rest of the floors. So typically, we'll perform the test in the lowest finishable area of the house. Next, we're going to talk about another item that people generally historically haven't considered, although awareness is growing. And this item that can compromise indoor air quality is mold. Now, every house has some mold in it outside. Unless you're in like a NASA clean room, there's going to be some mold in the air. Mold is the result of biological material breaking down from fungi or fungus. So wood, leaves, grass, uh, any biological material will eventually rot and break down. And when it does, it's usually being deteriorated by fungus, which releases spores into the air, that is what can compromise your indoor air quality. Um, usually when you have a mold problem in a house, it's a combination of A, moisture, helping speed that process up, or poor ventilation, usually it's a bit of both. What folks don't realize is uh, with all the utility prices going up and everybody worried about green homes and efficient homes, they're adding insulation and buttoning up the houses and making the houses nice and tight for energy efficiency. However, what's happening is the houses don't breathe anymore. So you're trapping that humidity in the house. You're not allowing for good air exchange in the house. Some new homes that are ultra energy efficient actually will have a vent fan that runs 24 seven to help exchange air. But if you don't have something like that going and you button up your house too, too tight and you have a little bit of humidity and no air exchange, you can make a great environment for mold to grow. Mold can be remediated, so it's not like if you have mold in the house, you have to burn it down or move out or whatever like that. Generally, mold remediation means taking care of the moisture and the ventilation issues that are the cause of the mold. And then you'll have to treat the mold with some type of antimicrobial solution. If you're an avid DIYer, do not just go and spray bleach everywhere and think that's going to fix it. That is not going to get it done. You need a proper antimicrobial solution to kill it. Remember, we talked about what mold is from. It's from fungus breaking down biological material. That biological material is your house. So if you let it go unchecked, and we've seen this in homes, especially houses that have damp basements and crawl spaces, those damp areas where the fungus is growing, it's literally deteriorating the wood that makes up your house. So it can damage interior areas, it can actually get to the point where it rots out the structural components, like the floor structure of the house. So um, in addition to harming the people, mold, as it continues to grow and fester, will actually eventually ruin the house.